Welcome to the Sylvan Australia podcast, where we talk everything rural lifestyle. Okay, welcome to the Sylvan Australia podcast, and uh, I'm here with our national sales manager for rural merchandise, Michael Frost. It's Great to have you here in Western Australia, Michael. Hey, Nick, it's fantastic to be out and about. I think we talked the other day. It's been 15 months since I've been to Western Australia with all the different goings and on and border closures, etc., etc. And for me personally, it's been just over 12 months since I've really got out in the field again since the start of the really the sort, of, sort of the ramping up of the COVID situation last March. So, um, no, it was great, great to get here. I, you know, Great to get on a plane again. Just tell us a little bit briefly about that experience. What what are some of the differences you've seen in in, in travel from you've you've been coming to Western Australia for forty years? Tell us some oh, of the look, differences. I think some of the changes that you, I saw was obviously the airports are not as busy. Yep. Um, plenty, I certainly got to park my car pretty easily, which is it was a bonus. Our dealers through the the COVID situation of March twenty twenty, how great they've been, and even our customers, how great they've been, and how supportive they've been. We've noticed some of our dealers had to change the way they did business. What, what were some of the things I noticed that a lot of our dealers now, you know, scanning in and that, that and uh, trying to deliver online and, and those sorts of things? Oh, look, there's been quite a few changes that have happened. I think that's what's great about the Australian farming sector. Our customers, they adapt very quickly. And um, I would say throughout the industry, everybody had to adapt quickly, you know, working from home. With Sylvan, we were we were allowed to continue because we we provide a service to the agricultural sector, uh, but we had to make a lot of changes within our operation about shift times, work areas, processes, procedures. But again, like the industry, the our team adapted to those changes. We had a lot of people working from home. Mm. Um, most of them are back now in in the office, but they've brought back the changes that they instigated when working from home. So we've seen a lot more efficiencies in the business. But you know, I keep going back to that that adapting the, the ability to adapt and and say hey this yeah it is a tough situation but we've just got to adapt and and get on with it and work out how we can how we can do what we need to do and get our products to our customers and spare parts and service and be available and you know one of the classic lines i heard from a customer was and, and I, I still use it today less voicemail more voice yeah most certainly i yeah. agree with that i was one of the lucky ones i was able to continue visiting um we only had a short lockdown here in western australia but um some of the things that we saw change in that in that period of time i know with a number of our corporate customers the way you would go visit them changed quite significantly so in terms of uh, there was a heightened level of not just biofarm security, but also they were doing the temperature checks, the scanning, all those sorts of things when you're going on to, on to farm. Mm. I think we're going to see an increase in that sort of level of, 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 of farm security continue in the, in the coming years. Yeah, look, I think you're absolutely right, Nick. And I mean, we had all, all, all of that temperature checking and, and that in our manufacturing and our warehouses and, and that. But I think the thing is that it's... Um, it's changed, probably they're all changes that are good um, and we're going to continue to see more change. But the other area is the, the incredibly quick adapting to electronic outcomes and, and ordering online and um, accessing information and, and being able to do things over the phone or the screen, whether it be you know whatever application you use. Um, certainly there was a lot of that done. I can talk about some of the service work that we had to do by remotes where the, the, the grower or the, the dealer would have his mobile phone on camera and showing you the problem and then mm. you'd be diagnosed get back in the office and, mm. and you know the traditional way would have been for a mechanic to go out there and have a look and so those things are going to continue to, to change and adapt and, and also that sort of thing can be sent to a factory overseas to have a look at as well so we're going to continue to, to keep that keep those changes rolling and certainly from the Sylvan business we see great opportunities to improve our, to our electronic offering and uh, we are doing more work on our websites and you know on our popular products the spare parts drawings now appear on the website so you can access them where traditionally it's more about putting the information in the person's hands rather than having to go through different levels of uh, steps different steps uh, to get that information so we'll see more of that um, our website we're investing heavily in that 
in making that easy to use, easy to access information and that. And also um, just how we do B2B business with our dealers, how we can improve that offering, how we can improve the information that's available to them and that which ultimately is good for the for the end user. Yeah, most certainly. I've also noticed an increase in even in the uh, tech, GPS technology based uh, control systems on sprayers and whatnot. We've had a heightened level of inquiry on the on the IBX 100, which is basically an ISO bus system that talks into the, the tractor ISO bus these days. So we're seeing a lot of on-farm efficiencies coming in. I think people have decided now is the time to make that change to an ISO bus system where they can upload all their data to a yeah, cloud system. I, I think there's a couple of things there, and I think partly it's also the ability to get the workforce. We've mm-hmm. read reports, you know, we've all seen reports how we haven't had uh, people coming in from overseas to work as labour on the farms my view is they're looking for technology answers to help them mm. improve their efficiencies and ability to get get things done differently yeah yeah most certainly michael i don't want to dwell on sales figures yeah. uh but we will just quickly touch on some of the tma released some data just the other day and just we'll quick briefly touch on it. under 40 horsepower tractor sales was up 60 61 percent for the month and 68 percent ahead for the year to date uh 40 to 100 up 70% in the month and 68% year to date. And the the 100 to 200 uh, was up 58% and 53% year to date. The one that surprised me was this one here, 200 horsepower, up 72% and 92% for the year. So I think that's a, some amazing figures. And given the stock shortages we're seeing nationally in Australia for tractor sales, I think that's an amazing outcome. Well, there's amazing ability by the industry to deliver those outcomes. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, to get those products into the country, there's been, it's, you know, publicised a, a lot of the shipping capacity problems to get product into the country. So it's a fantastic result. But I think that shows that the, the what we talked earlier about the under 40 horsepower, the 40 to 100 horsepower, I think generally you've obviously got the government's asset write-off, which must be making mm. a contribution to that. Yeah. And, um yeah, look, it's we, you're talking about sales. Yes, you would have to say we're very happy with mm. how things have gone for Sylvan over the last over the last twelve months. Quick shout out: those figures came from the TMA. The TMA are having their annual conference on the twentieth of July this year, so that's at the Hyatt Essendon uh, Fields on Tuesday, the twentieth of July. Um, so Gary Northover is the man there to contact uh, if you're interested in going. Michael, we need to talk about a new range of products in that catalogue, and you've got another catalogue coming up right behind that one, practically. Mm. So, give us a little bit of a rundown. What, what well, we're look, our autumn catalogue's coming to a finish now. There's a couple of new products in there. We introduced a new um, uh, hundred litre wheel, wheelbarrow sprayer, which you push around, like in for garden market gardens, uh, put them in glass houses, sheds, that type of thing, flowers, and. You know, it's been out of our range for a long time. It's been, we used to sell quite a few many, many years ago, and now we've reintroduced the range due to the inquiry. So we're hopefully uh, we're going to see that that start to move more into the into the market. This time of the year, we're seeing a lot of our lighting and security products selling um, as it gets darker earlier. Work lights, um, security cameras, that type of thing. We're seeing very strong there. And diesel equipment at this time of year was, is also very strong for us, but. Um, but generally, that catalogue's coming to end. We have a new catalogue coming at the end of financial year. It's our winter catalogue. It would be a very strong catalogue. It's approximately 16 pages, plus we have those of the selector accessories range. And then we've also got a separate catalogue for the for our machinery business. So that's aimed at the end of the financial year and obviously the government asset write-offs. Um, and we'll be releasing some new products in that catalogue as, as well for the market. So that goes out into the market on 17th of May, I think it is, and mm-hmm. that will run for, run for 60 days. Yep, some exciting products in there. I saw i got a sneak peek yesterday and uh, i'm looking excited it's pretty yeah. exciting to see yeah look i'd say look out for the catalog when it comes out because it's quite exciting some new exciting products um and i think that um one area i'll say that there is there is more products in there for the utv range of vehicles for the farm which we've seen phenomenal growth over the last four or five years and the products that have been designed are now extremely user-friendly and extremely easy to put on and remove from the vehicle so the vehicle isn't as it doesn't end up being a dedicated sprayer as an example so mm. there'll be some exciting products there for the utv users um which will really sort of expand the the vehicle's usage so michael don't hold out on us tell us a little bit more about this atv utv range um well look nick it's, it's pretty exciting we've 
we've had quite a few products for the U2, eh, and they've been developing. So what we've done is we've developed a 300 litre and a 400 litre unit. Uh, what we've done is we've put a motorised engine on it rather than a 12 volt. It's still available with a 12 volt pump, of course. And we've designed a four metre uh, boom that will, will fold up, but it'll also break back if you hit a area. So up until now, the sort of booms that fitted on those sprays was um, two metres that, but this is now four metres, so it can cover a lot more area in, in quick, quickly. And the other beauty of the boom is the boom goes into like a Reese tow bar. So you just simply pull the pin out, undo the hose, if you, or you could have a snap coupling on if you wanted to, pull it out, put the boom on the ground. Mm. And then you just grab the sprayer off and put the sprayer on the wherever, and off, to, off you go to use the vehicle. Up until recently, a lot of the time, the vehicle, the, the boom has been bolted to the to the machine and it goes with you wherever you go so um with that as a unit and it's very extremely competitively priced for the for the amount of features that you get in it um it's a complete spray package you can use your utv and you can get across the ground a lot more ground quicker uh when you when you're using it mm. not just the probably utv market but even the ute the small oh, ute course, market yeah. as well hilux and and those sort of vehicles as well we have seen yeah. a lot of contractors use those vehicles nowadays yeah, yeah, you can do that and uh, as you say the beauty is the boom just pull the pin out pull the boom off put it on the ground or wherever you want to put it grab your sprayer off or you can leave your sprayer on if you want to not use it so mm. it just makes the vehicle more you more, can use it for more applications some applications obviously farming commercial applications pest control um, turf councils, all that type of thing, where we're seeing more and more of those vehicles now appearing out in the in the work environment. Yeah, most certainly. So, Michael, tell us what's happening in the diesel range as well. Well, earlier this year we released our two hundred litre diesel cube product. We had our six hundred and four hundred in the market, which was received very well. So we've gone for a more compact unit that can fit into uh, your your. Um, four-wheel drive vehicles the commercial utilities that are available now you put in your utv and just a cubic shape means it's great because it fits neatly into the tray you can stack things around it it's fully lockable everything locks under the lid a tank level indicator and that is proving extremely successful as a product but yeah one of the real beauties is with the way or the type of vehicles that are purchased now, the type of utilities there, it generally sits very neatly in the back of those vehicles and allows room for, to put other things in there. So mm. going very well. Um, we also have a 200 litre, what they call eco unit, which is our no frills unit um, with a manual trigger in that. And that's a that's a designed as a price point product and that's going very well for us as well. And there's a, quite a bit of demand for that as well. Yeah, okay. That sounds exciting. We've also made some tweaks, I see, to the 200 litre truck pack sprayer as well. Yeah, well, what we We've done is we've it's been very, very successful over many years so what we've done is redesigned the top half of the tank so now where the hose reel mounts in in the previous version once the mount, hose reel was mounted you could only pull the hose out one way now that's been made so that the uh, the top so that you can rotate the the hose reel around 90 degrees so instead of pulling it out the side you can pull it out the back of the vehicle and that and there's a few tweaks with a filter external filter whereas the filter was internal before <laughs> so just a few things just 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 nice product improvements but it also makes the um applications extends the application unit for you because we had a number of people requested could the hose reel be mounted another way so they could pull it from the back of the vehicle rather than from the side of the vehicle yeah yeah most certainly some great great additions there one of the other things i noticed in the catalog as well that we've done this year is the 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 plus sign so it, what it does is allow people to add accessories to their sprayer yeah look what happened was a lot of customers talked to us we we always receive many phone calls about which uh, when you're buying a 12 volt sprayer, which boomless nozzle fitted, which uh, hose reel fitted, and that. So what we've done is we've tried to uh, we've put a red line sprayer, and then with a plus key, it shows you the boom that'll fit, and it'll show you the the hose reel as an example that will fit with the prices. So if you want to order all of the or a trailer, so you can order all the parts to make up not just a 12 volt sprayer, but you can make a complete unit with wheels and tires if you want. As you move up into the bigger sprayers with the bigger pumps, it then says, well, you can use this bigger boom, you can use this bigger hose reel, um, and it just makes it a lot easier for the customer to make a selection rather than have a heap of 12 volt sprayer range and then a range of accessories and you're trying to work out which fits there. So um, we're hoping that's a big help to our customers, and mm. obviously they can get more add more accessories to their purchase to uh, to extend the ability of the sprayer to do many 
many jobs. Yeah, yeah, no, mm. that sounds really good. Yeah. I urge anyone listening to us on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher, or wherever they get their podcast from, maybe go back and watch the YouTube uh, version of this as well. There's a the image of the uh, the wheelbarrow sprayer, and you can see that in use, and it's a, it's a magnificent sprayer and uh, I can see that even in hot houses and and a lot of the nurseries as well that are in shade houses ideal sprayer for that sort of yeah. application and look and in, 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 we're going into winter now so we've got some we traditionally sell uh, evaporative coolers for the agri- into the agriculture sector in summer and uh, we've now got some new diesel heaters and early demand is strong so there's a small one and a larger one um, and they're proving to start to, to be popular so can Looking like it's going to, as always, a bit cold in winter. And uh, if you're working out in the shed there, you can just run a diesel heater there. Look, even the mornings are a bit chilly now, and uh, we're we're only in April, but the, the the mornings are quite chilly. So yeah, I can see. Well, some I think your version of chilly in, in Western Australia is quite different to the Victorian <laughs> well, version. Thirteen's chilly here. <laughs> <laughs> I think at thirteen, I just wear a t-shirt. I don't really worry about it too much. <laughs> So, yes, Nick, so a bit to come through, um, and particularly on the UTV side. Yep. No, we're looking forward to it. Hey, Michael, look, thanks for joining us here in Western Australia. It's great to have you over here Mm. uh, again, and after 18-odd months or 15 months, yeah, yeah. it's it's great to have you here, and uh, we we look forward to catching up with you shortly in in the coming months, no doubt. Uh, no problem. I'm, I'll be off this afternoon with my pass to get back into Victoria, so I hope they'll let me back in. But no, it's all good. And I, I think, you know, across the country we're seeing very few cases of and that, and the borders are all back open and we're all able to travel, which I think is great for, even though we can't travel overseas, at least we can travel within yeah. the country and get out and about. And I think that's great for everybody to, to get out and do all that. It is, not most certainly. Michael, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate no worries, it. Nick. Thanks.